This video is going to be the tale of two countries. The first is going to be a country that's emerging on the scene as a world power, but is a socialistic, communistic country. The other is not. And I'm not talking about even America. I'm going to talk to you about how China's goal of being the world power in gold medals at this Olympics at all costs was brought to its knees and destroyed by a first time gold medalist from the country of the Philippines. It was awesome. And you're going to like the comparison. Stick around to the end for more. And we're going to start right now. Hello, my name is Kyle and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how China and their ambitions to be the leader in gold medals by the end of the Olympics at all costs was brought to his knees by a woman from the Philippines, Ms. Hydalyn Diaz. We covered her a couple times this week and she is awesome. And we're going to talk about this and the impact of what she did and how it affected the goals of China when they're trying to win the most golds at any cost. This article comes to us from the New York Times of all places, and I find it extremely interesting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the key highlights of this article. I'm going to take you back to a time when there was a country called the USSR or the Soviet Union. They were dominant in the world Olympics around the world. And I'm going to talk to you about how this is very similar to those days and how the communist government of China needs to project power and number one status in everything. If you look at the Olympics this week, you would see articles of China complaining to the IOC about how they're not being represented fairly or however they want to be deemed. They had to have the propaganda arm extend across all outlets of the media. So I'm going to cover this and walk along with me because Ms. Hydalyn Diaz of the Philippines, who won the first gold medal for her country, is really interesting because it's the first gold medal and she won it against a dominant Chinese athlete. And here's the thing, Chinese athletes, just like the people in the old Eastern countries of Europe, you know, old Germany, East Germany and Russia, these people who pretty much growing up didn't really have a choice of what they were gonna do. Let's take a look here. It says here that this is from the New York Times, mind you, this is from this week, right after Miss Diaz won her gold medal. It says here, China's sports assembly line is designed for one purpose, churning out gold medals for the glory of the nation. Silver and bronze barely count. By fielding 413 athletes in Tokyo, the largest number since Beijing games in 2008, China aims to land at the top of the gold medal count, even if Chinese public is increasingly wary of the sacrifices made by individual athletes. In other words, they don't care. They, they want to be number one. They don't care about the people. They want to be number one and that's it. So if you're a kid and you have certain skills, they're going to pull you out and they're going to make you do it. We must resolutely ensure that we are first in gold medals. Gao Zhengwen, the head of the Chinese Olympic Committee, said on the eve of the Tokyo Olympics. Let's keep going here. This is very interesting. Rooted in the Soviet model of the Chinese system relies on the state to scout tens of thousands of children for full-time training at more than 2,000 government-run sports schools. Government-run sports schools, 2,000 of them. To maximize its golden harvest, Beijing has focused on less prominent sports that are underfunded in the West or sports that offer multiple Olympic gold medals. What China's done is, look, they're going to look at and see where there's opportunity that's not, you know, very competitive. I mean, they're not going to go after basketball, not men's basketball at least. They're going to go after some other sports that they can probably compete in on a world stage if they just put an effort to it. There's no coincidence that nearly 75% of the Olympic golds China has won since 1984 are in just six sports. Table tennis, shooting, diving, badminton, gymnastics, and weightlifting. More than two thirds of China's goals have come from the courtesy of female champions and nearly 70% of its Tokyo delegation are women. Now listen up people. I'm doing this video because I want these young people who to watch this, who don't remember the Soviet Union or the Eastern Bloc countries back in the day, how they treated their athletes and what the perception on the gold medal stand on in the opening and closing ceremonies was not reality. These state governments 
put this image out there for the glory of the state. They don't really care about the people. And we're going to get more into that in a second here. For the Beijing sports stars, it didn't matter that weightlifting has no mass appeal in China or that the preteen girls funneled into the system had no idea that such a sport even existed. At the weightlifting national team training center in Beijing, a giant Chinese flag covers an entire wall reminding lifters that their duty is to nation, not to self. Do you remember what I said before about the social class system here in a country where we have CRT, critical race theory, or identity politics, or social justice, where I said how you are in a box and that box has the rights and whatever box you're in determines your rights, not as an individual, but as that box dictates. And those decisions are made by an arbitrary group of people to tell you that. So you don't have any rights. It's all about the state. And that's why America is great. And that's why any country that identifies individualism as rights, especially from a higher power like God, like we are in America, it's going to have an upper hand. The people in America who do what they do is for the glory of individuality, for the country, because they want to, not because they have to. That's a key difference. Okay, most countries are eager for Olympic glory. The US and the Soviet Union used the games as a proxy war, battlefield, Cold War. But Beijing's obsession with the gold is tied up in the very founding of 1949 People's Republic of China, which has seen a revolutionary force that would reserve countries of decay and defeat by foreign powers. For decades though, politics got in the way of Olympic achievement because its rival Taiwan competed in games of the Republic of China. Beijing actually boycotted until 1984 when Taiwan was named Chinese Taipei by the, for the Olympic competition. Now this is a picture from the 1980 Olympics in Moscow. The US actually boycotted those games based on the Cold War and Jimmy Carter, President Carter say, no, we're not gonna go. But well, we have a picture of Stalin in the opening ceremonies. And so America didn't show. And of course the Soviet Union totally dominated that. Now, four years later in Los Angeles, they boycotted us. So it went back and forth and it's just a cold war like we said before. But again, everything in this article said by the New York Times, mind you, is absolutely correct. And so here we have the athlete here. This is Miss Leao Quinn. I hope I pronounced that correctly. But this is the I believe she was a world record holder at the time, champion, and this is the woman that Miss Hydaelyn Diaz actually beat, and it was on her last lift. Go check out the videos we did before this week. It's really amazing in that. So the New York Times continued with this. Still, Beijing continued its plans, manufacturing programs in Taekwondo, canoeing, sailing, and more. Children who could stack bullets in the palm of their hands were dispatched to archery, meaning that they had a steady hand. Country girls with impressive wingspans were directed to weightlifting. So basically they look at your physical abilities and your skill set, and they put you in where they feel their best opportunity to win gold is. That's it. Children from rural areas, from families who are not so good economically, they adapt well to the hardships, they said. Um, yeah, I guess. So they find people who are already impoverished and then they pick them out and say, well, yeah, they can handle life and they can handle our Olympic program. Wow. That's amazing. Beijing's focus has been on sports that can be perfected with rote routines rather than those that involve an unpredictable interplay of multiple athletes. Aside from women volleyball, China has never won Olympic gold in a large team sport. Interesting. China has never won Olympic gold in a large team sport outside of women's volleyball. Very interesting. So read that in it for yourself. So toward the end of this article, it talks about how the Philippine rival surpassed her claim to gold. And it talks about Ms. Liao here and how she is supposed to win. And if you don't win, then you don't get certain benefits. It says here, it says, but unlike Simone Biles or Naomi Osaka, high profile Olympians who have spoken of the emotional strain of so much pressure, Liao did not address the mental toll of what she has done day after day since she was a little girl. Liao sighed. She wiped her eyes with the sleeve of her uniform. The national games were coming up, she said, and she would be representing her home province of Hunan. Sports funding for China's provinces depends on part of how each does in the national games. Olympics were over for her, but she had a new job to do. So that brings up a whole new issue with 
the mental health of athletes, Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka. I'm not going to discredit any of that, but this puts all of that in a whole new line. Now let's jump over to 538.com where they were actually projecting the Olympics and who's going to do well and how they're going to do. Take a quick look at this. It talks about how each country stacks up, how America won 113 medals overall, and that they fell 16 medals below expectation and how China went five medals above expectation. But with all of that, at the end of the day, the United States on the last day of the competition got three gold medals and passed China in the gold medal count 39 to 38. They're already leading in the other categories. But what I find really fascinating is that what prevented China from getting their 39th gold medal and technically tying the U.S was Ms. Hadelin Diaz winning the first gold medal for her country. Again, go check out that video again because it talks to the history of and the relationship of America and the Philippines. And I just find this just too compelling not to talk about. And a video on the Olympics wouldn't be complete if I didn't talk about the woke athletes for America. The US fell 16 short of their expected gold total. And I just wonder how many of those dealt with the wokeness coming into this country. I bet you that there was a bunch, but you tell me, what do you think about this? What do you think about Highland Diaz, her one gold medal and how it literally prevented China from claiming its goal of gold medal domination at all costs in the Olympics, by the way, over one of their favorite athletes, she didn't win gold medal, which means her town gets less money. I think that is horrible personally, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And also, please check out some more videos that we have picked out for you right here.